Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. We're back today for part 15, and what has been a very frustrating couple of episodes could end with a euphoric high today, because we have got four games left in the Swedish Premier League, we are five points clear of Hammerby, and we face them at home today. If we win it, surely nothing will stop us being champions, if we draw it, Surely we're heavy favourites. If we lose it, my word, is it going to get tense. After bowing out of Europe, losing out on group stage football, winning the league gives us, one, a brilliant return to the top tier, but also a real chance at qualifying for the group stages next year, because that time we're going to Champions League qualifying and almost be assured of a place before we start. So if you're looking forward to finding out if we can do it and how we get on in today's two games, then please do put a thumbs up on it. But if you want to stay up to date and find out how we finish the year, then subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Big one to come at the end of season tomorrow in the Hemel Save 2. Triple header over there. And if you did miss the last episode, then please do go back and watch it in the eye above. It is the most dramatic episode I think we've ever had on this channel. It was just chaos, so please do give it a try. There's links up there to the Twitch channel, football podcast and merchandise store too. You can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But today is all about the top two, Helsingborg versus Hammerby. And there's a reason we're five points clear. It is the champions. It is Vergy time. It is everything on the line in the last few seconds. We played two games off camera away at last year's champions, Nurkapin. We won 2-1 in the 93rd minute. We were losing with five minutes to go. We were level three minutes into stoppage time. Anthony van den Herk turned up with a big one. And then away to Gothenburg, we were absolutely shocking. We didn't deserve to win. Our goalkeeper was until very late on our man of the match. And then Brander Hendrickson in the 90th minute turned up to score a penalty that was won by Tahar Ali. So that is the ultimate sign of champions, isn't it? We did play Ostersons at home and drew one all. Anthony Vandenhoek scored in the 92nd minute of that one. And we won 4-0 in the cup. The only game we didn't rely on a late goal. One of the youth players, Simon Bengston, getting his first goal for the club. But all three league games off camera, we have won additional points in the 90th minute or later. And that is all you can ask from a team that are chasing something at the top. You can see we're playing by no means in our best. We're not playing vintage football. We're not looking to dominate teams. We're just looking to do it by any means. Because after coming up, winning the league seemed a ridiculous achievement. But having won the Swedish Cup, albeit on penalties, and having got so far in Europe and then just fallen short... This is one I really want to take advantage of. But there's no real need for build-up today. We're going to have a quick look at the youth intake because there are some gems in there again. If I go and show you the youth candidates of this year, you will be pleasantly surprised because there is one superstar and in a position that saves us some recruitment in the winter. Because Mohamed Hussein is a Swedish goalkeeper, two-star ability, four and a half star potential. Of course, Anders Lindegaard retiring. Well, this guy ready to step up and be number two. We've got Jolson improving between the sticks. So what a backup to have. And if we can get his personality worked on, if we can get him working hard, got a feeling we could have a superstar there. We have also got some high prospects. We've got the likes of Kala Agardius, who is a right winger slash striker. Definitely got the attributes for the right wing, but a good player nonetheless. Big potential again, if we can get his development right. And Kasper Dahlgren, a centre-half who can cover at right back. Massive jumping reach at the age of 15. How tall is he going to get to? And how good is his jumping reach going to become? That's what I want to know. But at the moment, we have got some real gems coming through. We've got a new backup keeper next year without having to spend a penny. So let's get through to the fixtures. It is the main focus of today's episodes. We've done as much as we can. The dynamics are phenomenal. The club atmosphere, possibly the best I've ever had at any club since it was introduced in FM. The team cohesion, the managerial support are good. And most players are relatively happy. So let's get through to the fixtures and towards the first of today's double header. And it's the big one. If we get a result against Hammerby, surely we're going to be champions. Let's get through to the tactical meeting. Let's pick the side we're going to be playing today. No changes recommended by the assistant manager. Nearly 10,000 through the gate for the first time in the league this year. And a real opportunity to push closer and get within one point of wrapping things up. So you can see on the bench, Adam Kaid a little bit short of fitness, but 
I'm going for what I believe is the strongest squad, and with the exception of Lingman and Van den Herk, who are both out with Knox just for this game, I think we're just about there. Netabai has come into midfield. We brought Rios in up front, who I'm a little worried about, I can't lie. But the rest of the squad, very, very strong. We've got Jolson in goal. Granaf, the long throw specialist at right back with Tursic over on the left. Weyberg and Vido in the middle. Alma, Jed, Hendrickson and Netabai the midfield three. And then Lerpa and Tahar Ali on the wings with Daniel Rios, the season's disappointment up front. The only one that I've really focused on signing myself and my word, the biggest flop by a long way. Probably going to be off at the end of the season, but can he give us one reason to change our mind? Or maybe one last big parting gift. Helsingborg v Hammerby, first v second, five points in it. What's the difference going to be at the end of the game? Let's go and head into a big title decider and find out the outcome. Well then, two changes for our visitors. We've got a pretty strong side out. Not many familiar names, I wouldn't say, from the English game or from British football, but... A very solid side nonetheless. Let's go and get into the first half. Tell the lads to do well. They're the side that pushed us all the way in the Swedish Cup final. They're a side that have really fought well against us this year. But here, at home, in front of nearly 10,000 fans, we've got a great chance to edge one big step closer to the title. Into the first half we go. I'm not expecting a blockbuster game. You've seen from our recent performances, they're close matches. They're generally pretty poor displays we've found a way to get over the line and most of the time we've had to wait till very late on having gone through 20 minutes here with no shots on target ourselves it looks like we might be heading for the same again not really worried about the other results because at the moment this is the only game that matters to us as Tursic brings the ball down for Tahar Ali on the left half an hour gone and we've got our first foray forward Lerpa's run through the middle it's a great ball to Rios oh he's hit the post I thought it was the kid's moment the goal opened up in front of him. The keeper's angles weren't the best, but no shot on target, no goal, and it remains level. That was the chance, but we've got a corner now with Hendrickson to the back post. Kasper Vidal, so often the hero, hits the woodwork here, and he's on a book in two. We've got to be careful because he's struggling physically, as is Hendrickson. Are we going to be able to make this count, or are we going to lose discipline? As Tersic on the left-hand side finds Tahar Ali. Oh, what a save! I mean, I don't know how Rios has missed it. He's got to go either side of the keeper there. But it's a stunning bit of reflex goalkeeping because he makes a stunning stop. I'm not sure how he's kept it out. It should have been 1-0, but really strong finish to the half. Not really got anything to show for it because at the moment it's 0-0, but there's 30 seconds left and Tahar Ali is in down the left again. Rabona Cross is headed away, only as far as Granath. Taking a similar pattern to the Swedish Cup final where we were the better side. At the moment, Hammerby camped in their own half, just trying to cling on to the break. As Almaged to Hendrickson. 15 seconds left as Lerpa to Rios. Daniel Rios might have just scored the goal that has effectively won us the Swedish title. On our first year back, he's been an utter disaster. Among brilliant signings from our director of football, he was our signing and he has been a flop. But my word, he scored a very crucial goal here. 46th minute on the stroke of half time and Daniel Rios has just put us three big points closer to the title as it stands. Five minutes gone in the second half. We're still 1-0 up and we're still pretty comfortable. But you just don't know what's round the corner. We've got a quarter of the game to go. I think we've got to make changes and there's a mix here between players that are apprehensive and players that aren't playing that well. And then also players that are probably... A little bit too tired, like Lerper on the right. But why take them off for this game is the biggest one. Tahar Ali will be replaced by Kaid, the youngster. Netabai replaced by Valencia, a slightly more defensive option. And in fact, I'll get Almaged on as well. We'll take on Velokia and we'll switch him with Valencia, who's better in the holding role. Put on Civis by mistake there. Good job we noticed that in time. Three changes made, 20 minutes to go. We're looking comfortable. Hammerby have only had one shot on target, but it only takes a moment to change the game. We've been so strong late on in these matches in recent weeks. I'm just asking for the same here. And again, it's not been vintage. It's been a really average performance. It's been a terrible game of football, but we've won 1-0. That is what champions do. Three wins in a row by the odd goal. This time it was on the stroke of half time rather than full time. But we did enough. Daniel Rios, the unlikely hero. You wouldn't have said that at the start of the year. 
but he's had an awful season. Maybe, maybe this is the turning point. Let's get through to the league table because we're eight points clear with three to go. I think we've probably done it. Thinking about it, it's actually a little closer to what we had at the first half of last year, wasn't it? Where we were winning all those games by one or two goals and just finding a way to get over the line without being spectacular. I know that the European football probably helps us because other sides have got commitments there. Hammerby not one of them, of course. And they have seemed to set up a little defensively against us in both cup and league games. But we've got to win. If we look at the table now, we're on 58 points to their 50. The truth is, we're going to win the title with 59 points, which means we've not even averaged two points a game. So you've got to say it is a terribly low standard. Let's see what the total was last year. It's got to have been higher, surely. 60 points. So maybe not, but then look at last year. You've got a side on 60, a side on 59, a side on 57. And we're at the territory already where no one can get past 59. So no one can even match the record of last year's top two. And that just seems a little bit off to me. So a very frustrating year. You can see the tables a lot tighter, actually. There's no whipping boy at the bottom like last year with Varbergs on 21. There's not really that gap in the middle. It's very consistent throughout the league. So maybe a part explanation and mitigating circumstances, as well as the improved form of Swedish sides in Europe. But still, I'm not sure that's a good enough explanation. AIK and Malmo, they've got European money. They have to get better next year. But Hammerby, it looks like, have gifted us the title. Three back-to-back -back one goal victories. And for the first time, heroics from Daniel Rios. We'll be back next week to play Helmstad's maybe wrap up the title. And the next episode can be a real title party. And in the derby as well. Well, it turns out we might largely know what we've got to do before we head into our game today. Because Hammerby face our rivals Malmo. And that kicks off an hour and a half before our game. So we should be about 70 minutes in before we kick off. And we'll know exactly whether we're going to need a result or not. So let's skip ahead till we get to kick off time. And see if there's any update because this could be a monumental moment in this save and change it from what was a return Helsingborg to the top of Swedish football to a proper builder nation. Oh, we have just had a huge, huge moment. Look at the screen. Do I? Do we wrap up the title and then do I? We've rebuilt Helsingborg. The save is rebuilding Helsingborg. We've done that. Yes, we could go on and rebuild the country, get them into the top of European football, if it's possible. But, oh, my club are in a relegation battle, and I've got my realistic hat on. I would not be turning this down. I mean, whether we'd even get a chance is another question, but, oh, it's so tempting. Look at them languishing there in 23rd. How many of the stars have gone? Snodgrass has gone. Barry Naismith. Loads of people gone. Oh, look. Cal Naismith went to Bristol City. What foresight in football manager. Oh, and they've got one of our former heroes from the Hemel save on the ends as well. Sol Alidor Hamilton. Oh, it's getting more and more tempting every single time. I'm going to have to have a real think about that. Look, we haven't got to make a decision today. Let me know down in the comments what you think of that. Maybe it's something we can consider. I'm sure it'd be a lot more painful for you to see me manage the club that I support, but... I'm not sure if I'm ready for it. And we've got a lovely challenge here with European football on the way, albeit not until July next year. So that's something we can consider. I wanted to have a quick look at how the Swedish sides are getting on in Europe, but we'll do that in the next episode now because Hammerby are ahead and that means the title is not officially wrapped up. We need to go and get a win in this game. We certainly need to avoid defeat. And Helmstad's probably one of the best sides to do that against. Really struggling near the bottom of the table. We've got a suspension at left back to Tursic, so Hadjint comes in for him. Unfortunately, Lingman's still out, but we have got Vanden Herk back. He'll come onto the bench, but I'm starting Rios. He was the hero in the last game. I want to give him a real chance to push on now. So let's go and get into this one, see if he can be a star, and see if we can get the win to confirm the title. Let's go and find out. Well, here are the lineups, and as you'd probably imagine, it's not the strongest one that Helmstads have got. They have got Freddie Umberg, former Arsenal superstar, in charge, and we'd be nice to pit our wits against him. But the truth of the matter is, they're a shock inside. He's improved them, they've done a lot better, but it's not enough, and it was too late for them to survive. So we're going to get through the tunnel interview and into the first half, and to be honest, I'd actually be disappointed if we only win this one by one. But regardless, it will still make us champions, so let's go and see if we can get over the line. 
into the first half we go. Daniel Rios, make yourself a hero, son. And we are going straight from the kickoff with the hosts. They are playing around at the back. Play better football under Jumbo, created more chances. But can they create the ones to open us up? I'm sure there'll be some nerves in our Helsingborg side today. And to be honest, we're not even pressing higher up the pitch, which we'd normally do. It's a long kick downfield over the top. No one's chasing it. And that is great for us. If that's how many people Hamstads are going to commit forward, I think we might be able to keep a clean sheet. As Granath plays into Hendrickson and Vidal. Back to Jolson, to Weyberg, why to Hadjin. And the first thing I remember about Helmstads was playing them after the cup final earlier in the year, having the easiest game on paper after a disaster. And Freddie obviously came in not long after, or just before that, I can't remember which, as Hendrickson goes back to Vidal and Granath. To Hendrickson, chips forward towards Rios, he's in one-on-one. -on -one. Daniel Rios, why did I mention that we might want to sell him? Why did I say that I'd flop with a sign-in? He's learnt the language now. He's settled into the country. Give him a break. He's going to be a star. As it's a corner for the host. Headed away by Lerper. Only to the edge of the box though. Daniel Rios in with a brilliant challenge. The lad is now possessed. Ali finds him on halfway. It's a good challenge from Felix. But where on earth has this form come from? It's the player we thought we were going to get. As Helmstad's getting down the other end. And Jolson makes an excellent save. Corner kick. It's been a crazy four minutes, hasn't it? It's an in-swinging corner. Allenson will take. Big ball into the box. To the back post. Lerper heads away. But again, the danger's not gone. On the right, they cut back. Tahar Ali's in this time. Now can we counter? Rios is up there. There's plenty of support. He's challenged by Ribeiro, though. And after five big minutes, we can all breathe. And hopefully, we can see out this lead. As it's a throw on the left for Helmstad, who have had a, a pretty decent start in terms of chances. That one's a long throw, headed just wide. They've definitely had a threat on our goal. Jolson's been worked a couple of times. It's not going to be easy, this. They're scrapping for their lives. But mercifully, it has calmed down. We get all the way to half-time without another highlight after a crazy five minutes. Our only shot on target is the Daniel Rios goal. They've had more opportunities. They've had more territory. They've had more highlights, to be honest. But we hold on to a 1-0 lead. And again, without playing vintage football, without dominating a game, we are making sure we get the result. As Tahar Ali, early in the second half, picks it up on the left, plays a 1-2 with Rios. Big effort from Netabai on the edge. It's a really good bit of goalkeeping to get enough of a hand on that. Tips it wide. It'll be a corner kick. And it's going to be taken by Hendrickson. Big corner to the back post. We've got men up there, but Bengtsson heads away. Lerper will chase it. But can he recycle the possession? Can he get another chance going forward? Or will it peter out? It's Vidal. Back to Hadjin. And unfortunately, it's the latter. No chance created. And we're back with Halmstad. As Felix, just inside his own half, goes back to the goalkeeper. They don't seem in a rush to commit players forward. That's the only thing I would say for them. But they're definitely playing some good stuff as Ribeiro gets it up to his striker. Nice run in from the left-hand side. Faber's covering well. They've maybe not got the quality or cutting edge, but you can see the work Lundberg's done with them. You've got to be fair. As Netabai wins it high up for Rios. Hendrickson's a lerper. Good challenge from Benson, the left-back, but it falls for Granath. Plays down the line to Lerper again. Chance to take on his man. Cuts back to Granath and Rios and Lerper. Great challenge to Hendrickson. Effort from the edge of the box. Smashes the woodwork and somehow, I'm not sure about the physics of that, comes out and then goes wide of the other post. But it's 1-0. We're having a much better start to this half. With an hour gone, we've probably got to start to think about changes because there's some tired players back there. And now Hendrickson's got a knock. So he'll have to come off. Shame because he'd been our best player. We'll bring on Valencia for him. I'll also bring on Velokia for Netabai. And I'll bring on Kaid. Probably for Lerpa this time. And we'll switch Tahar Ali over to the right. 24 minutes plus stoppages to go. And 24 minutes from becoming Swedish champions. Back to back titles. Second tier, then first tier. I didn't expect it to be this comfortable. It'd be amazing if we could pull off this achievement. Five minutes left. There's not much going on. I think we're going to do it, you know. With two games to spare, we are three minutes of stoppage time away. And my word, we've got a goal kick. It could yet get tense. We're not going to see it, though. 1-0 to the Helsingborg again. I said I might be disappointed if we only win this by one. Well, I'll take it back because we're champions. And after the heartbreak we had in Europe, the last minute disappointment, the last 20 second disappointment, in fact, we have bounced back with a plum in the league. One goal wins every single week. 
and one goal wins does the trick. Daniel Rios the hero again, as Helsingborg return to the top tier in style. They lift the Swedish Premier Division, and it will be Champions League qualifiers next summer. But are we still going to be here, or are Luton Town going to come calling? Let me know down in the comments, but what a finish to the season regardless. Well, I've talked about FM perhaps being too easy a number of times on this channel in the last few months, but it doesn't take away from this as an achievement. Disappointment in Europe, but a League and Cup double in our first season back in the top tier. I mean, it's stunning really, isn't it? And we've not got the best 11, but we've got the best squad. We've got depth, and Andreas Grankfist has played his part in that too. I mean, Champions League qualification, I'm not sure which round we come in at, but it's a real chance for more money. And the budgets... 99 grand as a transfer budget. The club is still in a mess financially. We're going to need to get group stage football for that to change next year. What I am going to do off camera is apply for the Luton job. Whether we decide to take it or not, whether we get the opportunity, I'm going to apply. I want all of your thoughts down in the comments. We're going to go to the schedule and look at when we're going to be back. And it's simple. The final game is against rivals Malmo, who will surely be back next season. The end of year review and maybe... Some job news on the horizon. If you did enjoy this episode, seeing us wrap up the league in the grittiest, ugliest style possible, then please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. It's been a dramatic week on the channel, and that continues tomorrow as we have a triple header to decide our league season with Hemel Hempstead. You can find that one up in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, football podcast, and merchandise store too. But let me know in the comments what you think of the potential job news. Please do join us here in a couple of days time above my head now is the last episode if you missed it the most dramatic one we've ever had and i'll see you again here next time with potentially a very big decision to make <laughs>